2023 has been absolutely filled to the brim with new rock and metal albums, from Lighting Up the Sky by Godsmack and 72 Seasons by Metallica, to more recent additions like Life Is But A Dream by Avenged Sevenfold and But Here We Are by Foo Fighters. And yet, we've still got many more records to go before this year comes to a close, starting with a particularly exciting one for the Army of 12. On July 28th, Seven Dust premiered their 14th studio record, Truth Killer, produced once again by Elvis Basquet and released via Napalm Records. With an already stacked and ever-growing ballad of records competing for best record of 2023, how does Truth Killer stand up to what's come before it? Is Seven Dust's latest project worth your time over the dozens of other albums released this year? Well, stick around to the end of the video to find out. So for anyone who watched my reaction video to Seven Dust's third single, Holy Water, you'll remember that for a long time, I had made a misguided assumption about this band that kept me from seeking them out and giving them a proper chance. However, lately I've been spending a lot of time listening to their most recent albums to get a sense of what I've been missing out on and to prepare for this review. And what I've learned over the course of the last few weeks is that Seven Dust have evolved significantly throughout their career, with earlier albums sounding like a different band entirely when compared to who they are now. Truth Killer emulates this concept perfectly, though calling it a perfect album on its own would be a stretch. This record has a lot to offer, but not everything delivers to the fullest of its potential. To understand what exactly I mean by that, let's start at the beginning. Opening the record is I Might Let the Devil Win, a meandering halftime track about escaping temptation. And if this is your first Seven Dust song ever, it will likely give you a very misguided first impression. The swung halftime groove, spacious instrumentals, and electronic drumbeat give the impression that this record is gonna be mellow and low key, which is far from the truth. Admittedly, not a great start considering how intense the rest of this album is, but at least the song builds to a bombastic climax, mirroring the feeling of temptation quietly creeping in until it completely overtakes you. Vocalist Lejean Witherspoon repeatedly states the devil won't win with increasing intensity until around two minutes and 55 seconds when he finally admits, actually, the devil might win. This frightened whispered line is accompanied by a fantastic bass drop. And when the band returns in force, we're greeted with the full power of Seven Dust and given a proper introduction to the album. However, Lejean's vocals are slightly off from the rest of the band whenever he repeats the same line as before, making it feel a little sloppy. I imagine they were going for a frantic, panicked vibe, which does successfully come off, but I would rather have the melody be perfectly in time, especially considering that this issue only occurs on this song and is nowhere to be found on the rest of Truth Killer. Overall, I Might Let the Devil Win is a dramatic but rocky start to the album though not so problematic that it had me worried going into the following song, which just so happens to be the title track. Truth Killer, the song is a considerable step up from the last one and captures pretty much everything great about Seven Dust in a single track. Rhythm guitarist John Connolly's deep wah affected distortion combined with the freight train-esque power of bassist Vinnie Hornsby and drummer Morgan Rose gets your head grooving to the beat instantly. One standout piece of this song and others as we'll come to see is the breakdown in the bridge. Morgan's double bass is just oh so satisfying when combined with Lejean's screams. That is, if you're a fan of dirty vocals. I find them tolerable in specific cases, and I definitely prefer high-pitched screams over death growls. This song uses both well, and they happen so fast that they're pretty easy to ignore in case you're not a fan. Otherwise, Truth Killer is a pretty good track and a much needed shot of adrenaline for the record. That energy carries into the next song, Won't Stop the Bleeding, which mixes things up even further with a 3-3-2 accent pattern for its verses. This song has what I consider to be the first truly catchy chorus of the record. I latched onto the melody and the lyrics instantly, and even though the underlying instrumentals aren't quite as entertaining as the previous track, I had a pretty good time with this song. Speaking of instrumentals, lead guitarist Clint Lowry's debut solo for this record is underwhelming and forgettable. Because of this, Lejean's macho vocals are definitely the highlight of this track, establishing it as a comfortable mid-tier song. Up next is the record's second released single, Everything. And no, it is not a cover of Michael Bublé's hit song from 2007. Lejean shows off the full capacity of his voice in this song, going from a bright clean tone to hefty mid-range to raspy belt and finally a blood-curdling scream in about only 60 seconds. The verses of this song are fantastic, with just 
enough groove to keep you moving the whole time. And that scream is filled with a rage like no other. It is the perfect setup for an equally great chorus, which cleverly hides manipulation inside a seemingly empowering message. Rather than just stating that he can be anything, Lejean specifically says, quote, I'm gonna make you believe that I can be anything. As if speaking from the perspective of someone who lies through their teeth about anything and everything just to get people to trust them. The whole song is incredibly well written and I consider it to be the first S tier track from this album. With track number five, No Revolution, we enter the mid section of the album where late game singles and unsung heroes often reside. And on Truth Killer, it is no different. Take the awesome double kick breakdown of the title track and turn that into a full blown riff and that's no revolution. This song is just begging to be covered by metal drummers, and I'm all for it. Plus, the chorus of this track is arguably the most memorable on the entire album, and Lejean's line in the first verse, quote, I never feel God this close to war, has more commentary on religious hate and violence in one line than some songs have in the entirety of their lyrics. Clint Lowry somewhat redeems himself with a moderately cool solo, but it's still not on the level of the surrounding instruments. Aside from this one flaw, No Revolution is fantastic and exceeds the already high bar of quality set by the last few songs. Unfortunately, the same cannot be said for the next track, Sick Mouth. This song is fairly monotone, especially in the chorus vocals. Some odd harmonic choices are also present and in a different context, they likely would have worked better. I'll be honest, I don't really have much else to say about this song because it was forgettable compared to all of the tracks that surround it especially when you consider that the next song, Holy Water, has a very similar opening riff that is honestly just better than the one on Sick Mouth. Speaking of Holy Water, this song is still really freaking cool, and it's one of my favorite tracks from the album. Like with No Revolution, this song is laced with religious commentary, and Lejean's narrative capabilities are on full display. Everything great about Seven Dust is present in this song. Great lead and harmony vocals, a powerful rhythm section with unique lead and rhythm guitar lines, and stirring lyrics. This song was a great choice for a single, and I really hope they do play this one live on the upcoming tour. We're now just over halfway through, and so far, Seven Dust have kept up a relentless pace, with only a handful of moments of wavering. However, their momentum begins to wane across the next three songs. Leave Hell Behind takes after Sick Mouth with some odd harmonic choices and an average melody, and doesn't really have anything new to offer. At seven songs in, following arguably the best song on the album, this is not a position you wanna be in. After that comes Superficial Drug, the most recent single released for Truth Killer. This might be the only song that I genuinely dislike on this album. The four on the floor dance beat is an attempt at variation and changing pace, but it does not land well at all. The whole song feels like a semi-ironic parody or cover, and I'm not sure what prompted the band to write it. And finally, track number nine, Messenger, continues the attempt at switching things up with a power ballad adjacent melody in Swung 3-4. This song is fine, but nothing about it stands out. Also, and this is more of a personal thing, I think titling the song Messenger was the wrong call. The word passenger comes before it and is delivered with a lot more clarity and intention than messenger. So much so that I thought I was mishearing the word at first, thinking that it should be messenger instead of passenger. Again, this is more of a personal complaint, so just take it with a grain of salt. With that, we reach the tail end of the album. It seemed as though Seven Dust were getting lost in the weeds after that halfway point, but they managed to straighten things out and pick up steam again with love and hate. Remember when I said that they made some odd harmonic choices in Leave Hell Behind and Sick Mouth, and that those choices might work better in other situations? This song is that other situation. The combination of Basket's mixing magic and enhancing Lejean's vocals during the pre-chorus is startling, but in the best way possible. And add on the signature Seven Dust guitar wah, and you've got a recipe for a certified banger. The main riff of this song is absolutely wild, and Morgan's China cymbal hits in the gaps between notes create a bizarre texture that you can't help but be drawn to. And finally, the subdued electronic outro makes for a great pace change. Though I do have one issue with it that ties into the final song of the record, but I'll get to that in a moment. First, let's talk about Fence. I had some mixed feelings about this song at first. Like I said earlier, I find dirty vocals tolerable in specific cases. And at first, this song did not match that. However, the more I've listened to it, the more Lejean's testosterone-filled screams grew on me. It helped that everything else about this song is fucking awesome. From the frenetic main riff and quirky phased guitars in the post-chorus, 
to the world ending breakdown and spacey guitar solo in the bridge. Just like with Holy Water, I really hope they play this track live since it'll be a fantastic way to get the crowd hyped. And real quick before I give my final impressions, I do think that this album's track list should have been tweaked. Love and Hate makes for a great finale to the album because of its massive chorus and dynamic outro, whereas Fence feels more like an aggressive early album song to get the engines firing. I think my ideal album order would have been to take this song and slot it before Truth Killer, and maybe switch around some of the middle tracks to break up the three song run that nearly kills the album's momentum. Considering that I'm likely only listening to this album on shuffle from now on, it's not that big of a deal, but I did need to consider it for the sake of this review and to determine my final impressions. Truth Killer is a damn good album, and it was a lot of fun to listen to over the last week. I'd say in addition to No Revolution and Love and Hate, the singles are among my favorite tracks, with the notable exception of Superficial Drug. Connolly's signature guitar sound is phenomenal, and it's used very well across the album. Clint Lowry has some excellent lead lines, but his solos left a lot to be desired. Elvis Basquette's mixing is downright flawless. He truly is a master of massive hard rock sounds without making everything sound identical. I also appreciated the variety in meters and feels across this record. Most of the songs feel pretty distinct in terms of the instrumentals, though not not always in the vocals or harmonies. Lejean's tone and presence are awesome, but his range does seem limited. Many of the melodies have similar highs and lows across both songs and sections. However, he does a good job creating variety in other ways with aggressive belts, rasp, clean tones, and full-on screams. Overall, other than a handful of complaints on specific songs, I think every member of the band delivered a great performance. While I don't think Truth Killer is the best rock album of 2023, I do think it's a very solid contender for the top five. Possibly the only deal breaker is the abundance of dirty vocals and screaming. If that's not your thing, then I could see this record sounding a little obnoxious and grating, but no matter what, I recommend all hard rock fans give this album a shot. The understated talent of this epic five sum might just impress you in a way that you never expected. Let me know your thoughts on the record in the comments below and check out this playlist with more hard rock album reviews from the last couple of years. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.